Welcome everybody to this uh, Clarin Cafe. I, I don't know if uh, you are familiar with this uh, uh, cafe that Clarin, Clarin organizes. Uh, these are uh, informal uh, events that uh, where we all meet, uh, either we're researchers or academics, experts or students, and we discuss uh, various topics that are of relevance to the uh, activities that go on within the uh, Clarin universe. So um, for this cafe, I am the organizer. I am Maria Gavrilidou. Uh, I am the chair of the user involvement committee. And we organized this cafe together with Francesca Frontini from the uh, member of the Clarin board of directors and Juliana van der Leck, who is our training and education officer. We have the support and the coordination of Thalassia Contino. And as you all know, the event is being recorded and this is for dissemination purposes. If you have uh, questions or comments during the presentation, you can always put them in the, in the chat box and there will be a uh, half an hour of uh, uh, discussion time at the end of the uh, presentation. So um, this is the schedule. Now, after a brief presentation that I will uh, do about Clarin, this Clarin 101 for people who are not familiar with Clarin, then we will have the presentation, which is titled of users and infrastructures. And then we have the discussion, like I said before, and we go to the uh, presentation of Clarin. Okay, since uh, many people are here familiar with Clarin, I will go briefly through the um, these slides. Uh, the uh, Clarin has Eric status in uh, 2012 and has been a landmark, a free landmark since 2016. And what you can do with Clarin is that uh, uh, you can get uh, easy and sustain sustainable access to uh, resources and tools. Klein addresses scholars in the humanities and social sciences, but not only, and uh, the general public, the industry could be um, users of Klein as well. The language data that is stored in uh, the repositories of Klein are in any form, uh, available, written, spoken, or multimodal. And then uh, the tools that uh, accompany the data are there uh, to help people discover, explore, exploit, annotate, analyze, or even combine the data wherever the, these are located. But this happens through a single sign-on environment. So this um, uh, we can uh, say that ser uh, client serves as an ecosystem for knowledge sharing and training. It is one of the European research infrastructures in the SSH Open Cloud Cluster, and it participates in Open Science Cloud. So we have three pillars uh, uh, in the client strategy, three basic axes that we move by. And this is our users who can be uh, either academics or non-academics. Is it, it is our, the second pillar has to do with what we offer to the users. So what we offer is that since there are many language resources, data sets and tools out there, but there is no quality uh, assurance, what client differs, how client differs is that uh, we offer quality assurance and interoperability between resources and uh, data sets and tools through a uh, continuously accessible environment through sustainable and trustworthy repositories. And we further collaboration and knowledge exchange through our case centers, our knowledge centers. The landscape that we have tried to uh, form uh, is has to do, as I said, with sustainability. We have the central hub and the national nodes at the members the, uh, of Clarin, but we also further collaboration beyond Clarin with other infrastructures, projects, initiatives in the uh, domain. 
we have a distributed network of 70 centers in 24 countries that are members of Clarin and two more who are, which are observers and one third party in the USA. You can always find more information if you're interested on the uh, side of the website, the Clarin website and specifically in the links that we have here. The slides will be shared afterwards so you can have access to all these links um, whenever you want them. So how Clarin works, as I said before, each repository uh, that resides at the client center can have both language data and language tools. Both types of resources are described through a common metadata schema. And the language data can be either single texts or recordings, if it is audio material, or collections, corpora, lexica, word nets, etc., grammars. And the tools, on the other hand, can be standalone applications or web services or even workflows, including uh, um, many web services in a pipeline or web applications. So what the user can do is that the user can access the data through the Virtual Language Observatory, the VLO, where uh, faceted search facilitates the identification of the resource that the user is looking for. So in this example, we have search for Ukrainian resources, and then the system replies with a list of the resources that contain um, data sets in Ukrainian. By clicking on this uh, link here, you go to the landing page of the resource where you get, you get more information about the downloading options of the resource, if you can download it and how, the user license that, the, that accompanies the resource. So you are always sure what you can and what you cannot do with this resource. And for further details on technical features of the resource, its format, etc. And an overview of the tools for the that are included in Clarin that match the data. Since citing the data sets that we use has become uh, necessary, we provide a ready-made citation text, which you can copy and use when you need to uh, cite the resource. This is for uh, data sets. What about tools? You can access the tools through the language resource switchboard, and there you can upload your data, you can add your data, and then the system um, uh, through the metadata description can decipher which tools are matching, can process the data that you have uploaded. For example, if you upload um, a Greek data set, it will not uh, pro propose tools that do not deal with Greek, obviously. So you can get the matching tools through, through the switchboard. A very important initiative that Clarin uh, has, um, is um, conducting is the organization of the uh, resources per data type. So this is a user-friendly overview of these families, as we call them, of resources. So we have gathered together all the historical corpora or the parallel corpora or the newspaper corpora in families where the user can access them through this family notion. This family notion has uh, to do also with lexical resources and tools. So for example, a user can see what glossaries there are within Clarin or what tools there are for named entity recognition or for limitization, for example. So if you want to find more about how we um, uh, try to share the knowledge that we have within Clary and about the committees. You can um, get information. Here are the links about the five committees, the Clary Trainers net Network, the ambassadors. The, and if you're interested in getting a mobility grant that we propose to Clary, please use these links to get more information. Here on the Clary Learning Hub, uh, you can get more information about all the important 
training and learning issues that we have in uh, client training workshops, the uh, DHCR, Digital Humanities Course Registry, guidelines and best practices that uh, we gather. And then you could also participate in the trainers network. If you're interested in those, please ask Juliana. She's responsible for training and teaching in Clarin. And then we have uh, impact stories and tour decline. You can find all these things in uh, the client website. I will not um, waste, um, uh, take any more time on these. And then uh, I would like to um, introduce our speaker for today's cafe, who is Canela Uli. She is a senior research associate with uh, the Institute for Language and Speech Processing, ILSP of Athena Research Center in Athens. And Canela will be speaking to us today of users and infrastructures. Canela, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maria, for the introduction. So as Maria said, uh, my name is Canela Pulli, and uh, I specialize in research infrastructures and language resources, and I have been involved uh, with Clarin since uh, 2015. Today, we're going to see the results of a project called Digital Landscape, which revealed the current trends in the use of digital tools and methods by scientists in the humanities and social sciences, SSH, as we call them. The findings are based on a web survey and six focus groups for which three institutes collaborated, ILSP, the Institute for Language and Speech Processing, IMSI, the Information Management Systems Institute, both at Athena Research Center, and the Academy of Athens. We'll see the research methodology followed, the results, and determine whether we meet the user's needs. In the end, we'll discuss future ideas based on the findings presented. So what do users want? This is one of the conclusions of our research. There is a clear need <clears throat> for a sophisticated infrastructure model, such as a digital humanities center that is easily accessible with a user-friendly interface and intelligent search engines. This model should provide a variety of rich data and tools from a single access point, including bibliographic resources and training material to support the use of the provided resources and services. <clears throat> It is crucial for the infrastructure to act as a hub within a network interconnected with other infrastructures and access points. The connectivity will enable users to find the necessary resources for their research or work and connect with other researchers. This approach will save researchers time, facilitate the aggregation and reuse of data and services. And these are some of the original answers provided more user-friendly search filters would be helpful since even small mistakes can lead to irrelevant results. Visualization of results in a user-friendly manner without unnecessary information, infographics explaining the infrastructure's features and navigation. Currently, digital services are spread across various websites. It would enhance my productivity to have all these tools centralized in one place. Additional tutorials would be beneficial for those outside the field who are interested in joining, helping them integrate more smoothly. Moreover, since many manuals are difficult to read, incorporating video tutorials would be more effective. To find out what users want, we created a questionnaire. To do so, we took into consideration previous related work, especially the European Survey on Scholarly Practices and Digital Methods, needs, excuse me, which took place in 2015. This past survey was based on almost 2,000 answers, 139 of which were from Greek researchers. Our questionnaire was circulated as a Google form. It had 24 questions on demographics, digital work, the pandemic and whether it, aff it affected the work of SSH researchers and their desired needs regarding infrastructures. There were open-ended questions, multiple choice questions and questions about the frequency of selected activities. In multiple choice questions, the answer were given with careful consideration of the participants' diverse scientific backgrounds. 
The questionnaire was sent to almost 5,000 recipients and 19 posts were made on websites and social media to increase its visibility. Due to each organization using its own contact list, the exact number of cross-posting is unknown. A total of 389 responses were collected. At the beginning of data processing, all questions were mapped to the research data life cycle, collecting, processing, analyzing, preserving, sharing, and reusing. The planning stage, however, was not included in the questionnaire. All responses related to the participant scientific fields <clears throat> were categorized according to the revised field of science and technology classification in the Frascati manual. Since the scientific field was a multi-choice uh, question, the file and number of disciplines exceeds the number of respondents. The research complexity was evident from the different stages reflected in the questions the variety of scientific fields, and the diverse digital methods and tools used. To capture all the underlying semantic relationships, graphs were chosen for representation. The answers were filtered, cleaned, normalized, and then fed into a Neo4j database for analysis and visualization. <clears throat> a few words about Neo4j. We used all the values from the questions and the answers, to create a schema with, with uh, 29 classes and 31 semantic relations, correlations. This resulted in almost 1,200 class instances and 300 semantic relations, relationships. To retrieve results, we used Cypher, a query language designed for graph databases, and we ran a total of 780 queries, the output of which was in uh, PNG and CSV files. For example, General Frascati is a class with four possible values, humanities and arts, engineering and technology, social sciences and natural sciences. And has General Frascati is a semantic correlation between a respondent and one or more of these values. Question seven, for instance, indicate which of the following digital tools and services you use in your research or work was a multiple choice question with 12 possible answers. The internet, digital communication platforms, e.g. email, social networks, etc. Online digital dictionaries, video conferencing platforms, e.g. Zoom, Skype, Webex, word processing software, e.g. Word, databases, image processing software, language technology tools for text, video processing software, audio processing software, geographic database software, and design editing software and other. From the beginning, we decided to gather statistics for three dis distinct groups of respondents. Those from all disciplines, those from humanities and arts, and those from social sciences. We chose to present and analyze the final survey findings independently for these three groups to investigate potential differences in the use of digital methods and tools across various scientific areas. This decision significantly increased the number of queries needed to gather the required data. To fill the table with all the statistics, we ran a total of 117 queries. This approach allowed us to answer questions such as, how many respondents working in humanities and arts use image processing software in their work or research? By combining a selected answer with a specific group of professionals. You can also see how this question is exp uh, expressed in Cypher. In this table, you can see several of the queries for question seven. How many participants answered question seven? The answer is 387. How many respondents use image processing software in their work or research? And the answer is 175. <clears throat> How many respondents working in humanities and arts use image processing software in their work or research? And that answer was 138. How many respondents working in social sciences use image processing software in their work or research? 
And the answer was 51. How many respondents working in humanities and arts use word processing software in their work or research? And that answer was 269. The second method we used was focus groups. We conducted six focus groups from mid-November 2022 until the end of January 2023, coinciding with the period when the questionnaire was open. The goal was to gather feedback, opinions, and perceptions from selected individuals and to identify the digital methods used throughout the research data lifecycle. Participants included professionals from various fields, information sciences, that was the first focus group, folklore studies and anthropology, the second, literature and linguistics, the third, social and political scientists, sciences, the fourth, spatial data sciences, the fifth, and finally, archaeology and history. Each focus group consisted of six to 10 participants, maintaining a balanced gender ratio. Participants were researchers, faculty members, and other professionals, such as teachers. The focus group sessions lasted between two to three hours. Four sessions were conducted virtually, while two other were held in a hybrid format. The discussion was facilitated by one or more moderators and was based on the questionnaire. It, typ it typically followed this structure, a brief description of an individual or group project, research project, the digital methods and tools used or developed during the project, the problems encountered while using or developing them, discussion on the reasons for the difficulties and suggestions for future projects. Most focus group sessions were recorded and analyzed afterward. The second focus group on folklore studies and anthropology took place on the day ChatGPT was launched, marking a milestone in the world of AI and changing the way we perceive and use digital tools. So let's meet uh, the users. Let's see who the users are and what digital practices they have before proceeding to what they want. We had 387 respondents, most of whom are aged 46 to 55. Two thirds of the respondents are women and 41% of the participants have more than 10 years of experience with digital tools and methods. More than one third of them are researchers. Thus, it is safe to say that the profile of the majority of the participants in this survey is a middle-aged female researcher with more than 10 years of experience with digital tools and methods. Additionally, here we see a graph with all the disciplines um, described in the survey. 36.8 of the participants said they work or do research in various scientific fields. We can see the scientific fields grouped per uh, the Frascati categories, for example, arts and humanities. The top three answers in the humanities and arts are history with 75 answers, uh, responses, languages and literature with 64 responses, and linguistics with uh, 55 responses. The majority of respondents are involved either exclusively or partially in the study of language and literature, followed by the study of the past, history and archeology. span These two categories represent the his historical core of humanities. On the other hand, in social sciences, the top answers are anthropology, ethnology, um, with 45 answers, social sciences with 31 um, answers, and education with um, 31 answers uh, as well. So 
um, their responses indicate that on average, two thirds of participants across all disciplines use digital tools throughout the research uh, data life cycle. For the sake of time, this presentation will focus on the results of all disciplines unless stated otherwise. However, it is observed that the use of digital tools is more common during the data collection uh, process, whether for creating or discovering data with uh, 85%. In contrast, the use of digital tools is less widespread when participants are asked to annotate and reach or curate their data, as it appears that approximately only one in two participants performs these tasks digitally. In this case, the percentage is 54.7 for all responses. For other forms of data analysis, such as organization, structuring, managing, and processing, analyzing, and visualizing, the percentages are quite high at 76.9%. The scientific field does not appear to significantly influence the use of digital tools for, uh, for its procedure. Um, here we see not only the basic Frascati categories, but all the subcategories. <clears throat> there are no notable variations in the individual percentages. In the second graph, scientific fields with fewer than 10 respons responses were excluded as these account for less than 2.5% of the total responses. As mentioned at the beginning, we also used questions to estimate the frequency of activities related to the use of digital methods or infrastructures. For example, we asked, how often do you visit? Are you physically present to historical archives, collections, or museums? The answers to which was for the majority, never or rarely. On the contrary, participants very often seek access to digitized um, or digital resources. To our surprise, though, 75% um, of all participants said that they rarely or never use general purpose infrastructures like Zenodo or GitHub or special purpose ones like Clary. We also measured the impact of the pandemic. A large majority, 78%, uh, 78.5%, excuse me, reported that the pandemic did not alter their research interests. A small group, 61 people, 21.5%, detailed how the pandemic impacted their research. Of these, 57.4% noted that change affected the research question itself, while 11.5% attributed it to the forced suspension of uh, either a research state or the entire process. The remaining participants attributed the changes to modifications in research procedures with the most notable impact on data collection methods, and that is 32.5%. Uh, 8%. This was followed by data distribution methods, 11.5%, research tools, 13.1%, uh, and the dissemination sharing of the research results with 9.8%. When asked whether they acquainted themselves with new digital tools, the majority answered positively and indicated video conferencing platforms such as Zoom, WebEx, and Teams as such. Only a small percentage, 8.3%, learned to use new specific tools or apps. While video, confer video conferencing platforms are made, are more of a medium uh, than a traditional tool, they have become the primary digital meeting space for SSH scientists whose work relies heavily on human communication. In their work or research, these scientists depend on face-to-face -face interactions to find solutions and receive guidance on suitable tools. We should keep this in mind when considering what they need from infrastructures. So what do these users want? 
Note that the majority of responses for the following questions come from female researchers aged 46 to 55. We asked them what services they would like a research infrastructure to offer and how these services would enhance their work conditions and outcomes. We received answers from 110 participants, which can be grouped into four, into, into four categories, tools, um, resources, training, and infrastructure, infrastructure issues. We also asked them about other issues related to the use of digital services and infrastructures uh, that concern them. It is interesting to note that only 87 people replied uh, and uh, answered this question. And it is even more astonishing that eight replied that they do not know. So let's see in detail what they want. The most important um, need recorded is for new content. Participants state that they primarily need tools with various functions and APIs without specifying which tools. They also require specialized tools for NLP processing and OCR to handle both printed and handwritten Greek text and images, such as manuscripts. Additionally, visualization tools and conversion services uh, are also in high demand. Given that the results of this survey could benefit the Clarin network, I explored both Clarin EL and VLO with various queries to determine what we offer for each demand. In VLO, there are nearly 17,000 records related to tools of all types. However, not all are relevant to the specific tools requested. Therefore, more refined criteria are needed to obtain more accurate results. The demand for improved search engines was also highlighted in this survey. Clarin EL, on the other hand, provides 49 tools, 31 uh, workflows. And here we see the Clarin EL processing services. We have uh, various workflows for um, different functions, sentence splitting, tokenization, morphosyntactic tagging, limitization, dependency parsing, name entity recognition, chunking, text categorization, um, variable aggression um, analysis. And we have in total th 31 workflows for four different languages, um, that is um, Greek, English, German, and Portuguese. Only registered users can use these uh, processing services, I must say here. But we have um, only one file um, converter and um, zero uh, visualization tools or, or OCR tools. The second thing users want is more data in the form of archives that need to be digitized, as well as new types of data, such as data from social networks. They also need access to bibliographic resources, library content, and publications. Finally, there is a distinct request for databases, though without further explanation of their content. And this can be interpreted either as a need for a large amount of data that an infrastructure is required to integrate from external uh, resources, or as a need for access to external databases that the infrastructure should provide. Again, there is a plethora of resources in VLO, approximately 175,000 records, meeting all the aforementioned criteria, which need to be examined in order to find out if they are indeed the desired data types. The same applies to Clarin, where fewer resources appear to be available. For example, we don't have 53 databases, but we have records where um, the keyword database uh, appears. Two crucial issues are mentioned for all types of resources. The first is availability. 
Open access is a major concern for users, along with the protection of personal data and copyright restrictions. In VLO, more than 300,000 records are publicly available, while the, the availability status of another 300,000 remains uh, unspecified. The second issue is interoperability, as all resources are expected to be integrated, interlinked, and able to work together effectively. Clarinel has specific guidelines for data providers who want their data to be compatible with Clarinel uh, processing services. However, these guidelines are not always followed. The next category of needs concerns training and educational material. Users need support not only for using specific services and resources provided by infrastructures, but also for staying current with uh, technological advancements. They need courses such as webinars and tutorials tailored to specific groups based on their digital literacy and age. While user guides and educational material um, are appreciated, they prefer to avoid lengthy and technical documentation. An also important observation was made about metadata. Um, about the automatic enrichment or addition of metadata. Our experience shows that providers often create metadata records with minimum information in um, infrastructures. And such a service would facilitate their work and improve the final uh, result of the metadata records. This attitude allies, aligns with the um, survey results on metadata standards usage, where we see <clears throat> that two thirds of participants reported not using any standards. Those who do typically uh, adopt multiple um, uh, ones, ranging from two to nine uh, different standards. The reluctance to use metadata standards can be attributed to the challenges of mastering a single standard, the frequent need to, to switch standards based on the project uh, requirements, and the inability of uh, general standards to address researchers' specific needs. The most preferred metadata uh, standard for SSH is uh, Dublin Core, followed by Europeana, TI, encoded uh, archival description, and CDOC CRM, uh, although the ranking varies between the humanities and social sciences. <clears throat> So after reviewing what we have seen, what can we do? Um, let's remember the conclusion we saw at the beginning. There is a clear demand for a sophisticated infrastructure model, such as a digital humanities center that is easily accessible with a user-friendly interface and intelligent search engines. We could, for example, ensure that infrastructures are accessible to people with disabilities. We can also improve user friendliness by simplifying procedures and redesigning documentation with infographics instead of lengthy texts. Regarding intelligent search engines, we can enhance them with features like voice search. We also read this model should provide a variety of rich data and tools from a single access point, including bibliographic resources and training material to support the use of the provided resources and services. New digital content could include memes, machinima, and geospatial data. A uh, parenthesis here to say that machinima, um, um, a combination of machine and cinema, is the production of films uh, using software and hardware from video games or other virtual worlds, and it is studied by digital ethnography. And we um, we learned that by um, one of the focus groups we conducted. We can also promote 
and curate new content, uh, integrate tools for older language forms and specific media types, such as manuscripts, as well as include visualization tools. Bibliographic resources could um, result from collaborations with other organizations and libraries. And finally, the desired training material to support the use of these resources and services can be developed into training courses, tutorial or webinars for all age groups. Something else is that we can implement methods, uh, as mentioned, for automatic metadata completion. The most important aspect, though, is that infrastructures continue to foster a vibrant community of researchers who actively interact with one another. Before I conclude my presentation, here are um, some useful tips on the methodology. Um, find ways to engage more people in answering questionnaires and run smaller targeted surveys for different age groups. Because as we saw, we sent almost 5,000 um, emails and got um, responses for, from approximately 400 people. Um, carefully consider the placement and order of questions to avoid biases. Balance the topics and avoid leaving important questions until the end. Our respondents may get tired and skip them. And probably this is what happened with the question on um, the, um, uh, the needs they have from infrastructures because it was one of the two final questions. Keep the questionnaire concise. Um, ensure clear boundaries between questions to prevent confusion and overlap. Use controlled vocabularies or restricted answers to minimize the need for normalization later. Uh, this is something that took a lot of time and it would um, we could have avoided it if we had used controlled vocabularies. Establish a common language with users, digital tools versus digital platforms. Um, if we were more specific in the way we asked them about uh, the, the digital tools, we probably could have uh, be given a different answer, but we don't know that. Plan the workflow in advance. For example, um, uh, the creation and the Neo for base, Neo for J database, um, and the familiarization with uh, the the cipher language was really time consuming. Conduct focus groups before creating the questionnaire to identify and address po uh, potential issues. Um, for example, we learned about the new types of data after we had contacted um, these focus groups. Um, this is how we learned about machinima. Whenever possible, hold all meetings in person rather than uh, virtually, um, because people feel more relaxed when they are um, uh, face to face and you might get um, more out of their um, of, of discussing uh, with them. Combine web survey results with focus group discussions and compare them to previous related work. Uh, also examine the level of satisfaction with digital tools or services in infrastructures because they might say that, that they um, they find what they want, but uh, are they really satisfied with um, the provided services and tools? And finally, be cautious when interpreting results. Consider factors like age, digital liter literacy, and scientific field. Because as I told you, um, the results are mainly based on a specific group of uh, uh, participants uh, who had certain features of age and gender. For more information, uh, please visit the publications available on Zenodo. So, how will you apply what you learned today? Research. To reflect on methods for user studies. Analysis of results of ongoing survey. Hmm? Take care of documentation training for published resources to design the resource and building in line with clearing plate principles, understanding of current needs. We read the survey, oh, we'll read the survey uh, results in more detail. Um, unfortunately, the whole survey is available only in Greek, but it will be very easy to have it translated. Improve resource documentation. Training and bibliographies are important. Conducting more in-depth surveys of this kind to find out the needs of researcher, researchers in these. 
And since centralization is not realistic, I would prefer to link as much as possible with other resources. Okay. Um, of course, uh, a survey like this is uh, useful for people who want to conduct their own surveys. And um, what I wanted to point out is that the, the, um, the design of the survey, the processing of the data and the interpretation of the results should be taken should be done with, um, um, one should be really careful while doing all this stuff because you might get different um, uh, results from what you uh, what you do with the data you have collected. And it's very important to um, understand each time who has provided the answers you have asked. And for example, if, if we had access to younger people, I said, suppose that the results of the survey would be uh, much different. I don't know if Maria agrees with that, uh, but still we only had um, the, ab the ability to contact people through con uh, contact lists. Um, and um, this is why we couldn't find uh, st more students and um, um, uh, people who were younger uh, uh, for this survey. It's a valid guess, Canela, that if we had uh, reached uh, to more students, I mean, if they had replied anyway, mm. uh, because we, the mails went out to uh, faculties and faculties' um, uh, organization of uh, students and things like that. But uh, I'm sure that as far as uh, familiarity with digital methods and tools, uh, would be uh, different uh, to this younger gen generation of researchers rather than this um, middle-aged, let's say, uh, researchers. But I was interested in this uh, reply here, analysis of results of ongoing survey. Uh, if the person who wrote that would like to uh, tell us more about this, which uh, where is this uh, survey going on? This was me, uh, but um, also oh, Valeria okay. is, okay. is uh, high, uh, also Valeria is co connected, and she probably would be able to tell even more about the survey. Mm -hmm. This is a survey that uh, we are uh, conducting uh, here in Italy uh, within a, a national project mm -hmm. that actually covers uh, four different infrastructures. Uh, Clar in Italy being only one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, indeed, uh, yeah, first and foremost, I. Uh, I was fascinated by also the methodology that uh, you used to analyze the results, which I think it's uh, showed to to be very um, allowing for a very in depth uh, an analysis. And then, of course, uh, um, yeah, also it made me reflect also what you're seeing now about also the possible limitations. In Italy, we are accompanying this uh, a survey with uh, focus groups. Uh, uh, vision groups, and indeed, uh, uh, what you just said made me think that uh, uh, there is a, a bit of a gap uh, between, uh, um, also a lag between the time when you run this type of analysis and the way in which technology evolves, which is very fast. Mm -hmm. So, so in our context, we have been wondering. Uh, how much we should re re rely on these results and how much we should be, try to project towards the future. Because as you said, the more and more younger people are familiar with certain technologies, uh, um, they probably might want to use more APIs and notebooks uh, rather than uh, easy interfaces. Certain things have been made easy also by technology. Uh, programming is easier because there's all, all this help. Um, so, yeah, how do you balance uh, what people want now and trying to figure out what they will want in the future, especially because when you run this type of service, it's because you you have uh, or you apply, want to apply for further funding that may come in a couple of years. Yeah, but Valeria thinks that, that she has... Uh, a bit of a poor connection, but uh, yeah, she, she's glad to keep in touch uh, mm -hmm. about uh, provide further details about our own survey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In our case, two infrastructures were involved, Clarin and Daria. It was a joint project. And uh, so that's how we uh, reached out to um, 
communities that within Klein are not so um, active. Let's say the ethnographers and the um, uh, archaeologists and uh, people, these communities were reached via Daria. Uh, but um, that's true. The um, it was um, it was a Canela. Sorry, if I if I monopolize, I, no. I just give you. I just uh, uh, say something that we um, were very um, disappointed in when we discovered that they replied that the most um, uh, used digital, the most frequently used digital platforms were Zoom, which was. I mean, we wanted something more as you can imagine, something more um, deep, <laughs> something more into language technology. And it was a disappointment to discover that the that there were people in these um, communities that we uh, got answers from that considered um, digitization of their work uh, method and procedures to work via Zoom and nothing more, okay? So this is a generation that is, um, you know, that not, not the young generation, okay? But uh, I don't know, Canela, you agree about that? Yes, my personal opinion is that um, the way we designed the, the questionnaire, um, created some problems with the answers they provided. For example, um, I think my personal opinion is that, um, and and this is from my experience with users in Clarinel, uh, the majority of people know what they want to do, for example, uh, what the, the demands of their research question is, but they do not know which tool will provide them with what they need. So when we ask them, if uh, they discovered uh, new tools, uh, of course, and, and uh, the, the video conferencing platforms was one of the possible answers, as we've seen in the previous question. Um, it was an easy way to, to say, yes, I, I did a digital, um, let's say, leap, and um, I'm more uh, digital uh, literate. Uh, but I think that they do not know exactly what tools they need they they know the result they want and yeah, this is very very useful indeed because mm -hmm. if you ask them about tools they will only answer what they know about but yes. there may be much more that in the infrastructure can do for them mm. uh, that's why i pointed out that when we ask them about their needs from an infrastructure or their concerns um there were uh, people who said i do not know and this was an answer um, and they they have um, uh, explicitly said that they need guidance with digital tools. And nowadays, after ChatGPT appeared, uh, that things change so rapidly every day. I I strongly believe that um, there is a, <laughs> a chaos of digital uh, tools and methods out there, and uh, one should. Um, Ha has to make a decision on which tool to um, uh, dedicate time and effort. And that person does not know if that tool will exist in the near future, as things uh, are today. Yeah, indeed, make makes a lot of sense. Thanks for the answer. Anela, there is another interesting um, point here as you have been also involved in uh, documentation writing, mm -hmm. uh, the point is take care of documentation and, tra and training for published resources. I don't know if you'd like to comment on that. Yes, um, I can show you that um, we have a, an extended user guide in Clarin, yeah, which is available both in Greek and English. And um, this is a very long, lengthy documentation, but one does not have to read the whole documentation. You can search, for example, with keywords and find the uh, respective chapters. Um, but the thing is, this is accessible through the main menu 
um, when you go to uh, the homepage of Claire Niel and you see the tab help, you have the user guide, you can search through uh, the user guide from here, or you can go straight to the recommended file formats. And um, we have spent a lot of time and energy to create this documentation and to have it translated because that was a demand from our users, but still they do not use it. And that's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And they prefer to have uh, direct uh, communication with one of the Clarin AL members, for example, send an email, uh, send a message, um, ask them face-to-face, uh, you know, -face, instead of trying to find uh, the answers provided there. So, um, and we have also a lot of information, both on uh, the portal we have created and the, the case center, but I think we must um, promote these uh, chunks of information in a more uh, easy to consume way. Infographics could be a possible way to do that. Uh, or some short videos, because you know, <laughs> the, the present generations and future generations are more accustomed to, to videos and image and short, short videos and uh, images instead of uh, text. So there will be a shift, uh, I think, in the way we document and present um, things in uh, uh, research infrastructures. Maybe uh, just to follow up on that, an idea would be to um, actually digest it. I mean, nobody, as you said, is going to read through or even bother to uh, search. So maybe just uh, make small chapters, small videos, small something, very um, um, focused uh, presentations on focused uh, issues. For example, how to use tool X, how to create metadata for a lexicon. I don't know, whatever, very, very focused things uh, because they don't, um, no, or they don't care, or they don't bother to um, to search in a big uh, uh, file. Thank you, Juliana, for your comment. Juliana said she liked it, but Juliana is biased because she's into training her, herself, so <laughs> she cannot yes. be a user. Yes, but since I was, uh, yeah, in my first years at Clarin, uh, I had to learn a lot, of course, and uh, the definitions. I love the definitions and the explanations in a very user-friendly manner. And I think uh, it is it can be a very good example for also, also for the other uh, Clarin centers. And I also like Susanna's comment, um, um, maybe uh, using an AI chatbot uh, could help here. Uh, I was actually talking about this a couple of weeks ago with Stephen uh, Clower about developing an AI chatbot uh, that would answer all the, the, the questions of users across all clarin centers, because we have so much data and so much documentation, which would maybe, I don't know, train an AI chatbot uh, to answer the obvious uh, uh, Actually, Juliana and, and Hank can, can testify. We, uh, in, we put this idea in, in a project that, uh, or actually in some projects, we, we, we played around with this idea of developing or applying AI uh, chatbot technologies also to infrastructures themselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, projects weren't funded, but maybe we just should do it. <laughs> And um, indeed, yeah, it would be a very good thing to have the user involvement committee collaborate here because, of course, in terms of usability, we want to make sure that uh, the um, uh, yeah that that's, the chatbot is actually helpful, uh, and you're you're the best judge uh, judges for that. And in this respect, I think that this uh, type of ideas or projects uh, could also be uh, the Fund, fund, partially funded uh, within the framework of uh, ongoing EOSC projects uh, where sometimes they issue cascading grants. So maybe if there is this, this type of idea and at least some, uh, some national consortia are willing to put in some effort, we can try to see if there is an opening for, mm -hmm. for at least mini, mini funding. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah. We would certainly like to um, have a follow up on this survey for the younger generation because we um, it 
it hurt that we couldn't reach them, <laughs> that we couldn't get replies out of them. But um, no, uh, it would be a good idea to um, to do something centrally and cross country. Uh, Another Maria, thing that maybe, uh, sorry, I, I just uh, one last information. We have uh, uh, on other topics to, touched upon today, we have uh, ongoing projects that aim at uh, bringing together uh, various data from various infrastructure, also within the framework of the EOSC, and creating uh, these huge uh, uh, scientific knowledge graphs. It is a project that is also run by open air and from the greek <laughs> branch of open air and uh, i think that some of the um, things that were mentioned by people in the survey so the link between uh, various types of objects uh, uh, publications uh, uh, data um, projects uh, this will also be answered more broadly within the framework of eos related projects so in a way not everything needs to be done by our own infrastructure, or, or better said, mm -hmm. Claren will delay is liaising with other initiatives. But it is very important to know that uh, our own users are interested in this because it it validates in a way the the effort that we're putting in in those projects. Can we uh, see the uh, rest uh, three of the responses? Uh, yeah, yes, that's why I was doing because you couldn't see all the answers. So mm -hmm. this is uh, one compare with National Landscaping Survey mm -hmm. uh, to adapt the infrastructure better to the needs of users. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm and to help researchers from the Clarence CM uh, node. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there is a question. Uh, from Hank, yeah. Please, Hank. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this interesting presentation, by the way. One of the things that um, was already striking at the, at the beginning was uh, the, the need for bi bibliographies, right? Um, so I was wondering, um, do you have more information on, on, on this need? I mean, bibliographies could mean lists of, of literatures, but it could also mean bibliograph bibliographic notes to certain texts and so on. So there, there's, a, say, ambiguity in this. So perhaps could you expand a bit on a little where, where, where the researchers feel the need? I think they were interested in all uh, sorts of uh, bibliographic references, and um, the problem is the the questioner was had um, many, not many, twenty four questions with multiple answers, but still we could not get into too much detail. We couldn't exactly ask them which type of bibliographic references are you interested in. And the the weird thing, though, is that they do not. Uh, do you remember that slide I had with the frequency of certain activities? The weird thing in all the the answers from the uh, questioner is that they wanted things they do not provide. For example, they do not use Zenodo. <laughs> they do not. Uh... <laughs> They do not want to share uh, easily their data, but still they want more. So we have to cu to cultivate a culture. And that's why I said it is important to have uh, the infrastructures as a vibrant uh, you know, organism um, where we must persuade people for the need to share in order to get. And uh, this happens also with uh, uh, what they want from the bibliographic um, uh, areas of um, interest. Okay, thank you. I don't know if there are any questions, any more points for discussion? I think there was too much. Um, it was a very uh, detailed um, um, survey and the results uh, are uh, extended. Uh, still, I had to choose some uh, chunks of maybe interesting information uh, because I couldn't get into everything and present the whole uh, work we have done. 
uh, still, um, I think for people who, who want to find out more, the, the publication in Zenodo would be really grateful. And with uh, tools like Google Translate or DeepL, <laughs> you can easily understand <laughs> what has been written in Greek. <laughs> so maybe you'll find what you're looking for in there. Is there a plan to translate it uh, to uh, publish something in English, Canela? You know, there has been a, um, a thought to publish part of it in English uh, because it it was a lot of work, but we summer is here, so we'll have to wait till September to see ah. what we'll do from the next period. Okay. Okay. I don't know if anybody would like to raise uh, another point for discussion. Okay, if not, I would like to thank Canela for this uh, nice presentation and thank you all for being here today with us.